Here's a, a little uh, a variation. I did another uh, a little uh, presentation about some issues we ran into, and I wanted to familiarize you with this. is sort of an engine performance thing. Engine performance is pretty intense. Now I've also got some uh, electrical stuff. I'm probably going to hit you with electrical tomorrow. Today's fundamental today. So I'm going to go ahead and get the, the engine performance one out today, out of the way today, right here. So what we had here was well, this lady brought us this thing, and she nobody had fooled with it, but she said it wouldn't start, and she brought it in here, and uh, make sure he gets a piece of paper and a pencil. You're going to have to have a table and test when you're done here. But uh, whenever you uh, uh, get one that you ever, other people have been working on, it's a little more complicated because you don't know what they've done. You know, unless they may have, you know, I've actually had to undo everything they did so I could find out what was going on with, with the real deal. And that happened when I was at the dealership a lot. But one way or another, this lady here brought us to us here at the school, and uh, it had died and been sitting a while, and it would have to sit a while longer before we could have a look at it because we were doing finals and all that. Nobody touched it. So here we got in there. We got to look at it. Now you got to remember, and I've said this before, and I keep hammering on it to make you understand. Every uh, engine controller, every OBD2 engine controller, Nick, uh, has got two rooms in it, right here. That one there, that one there, an enhanced room and a generic room. Now you got to remember that there's an OBD2 generic code and data stream room that talks to everybody's tool, and this one talks it on a dedicated wire. This one here talks usually on two wires, but this one here, the OBD2 generic, it's an ISO K line. It's just that one wire. And that's one over here. And so, uh, best you look in both rooms. You can access them both, get him a piece of paper. And um, anyway, it's best to look in both rooms. You look at this one first, usually, and then look in that one and see what you see. Because this one here will tell you the truth about unplugged sensors and all that kind of stuff. All right, so this Mitsubishi system got two connectors under the dash on it. It's got the regular 16 pin connector. All right, now, uh, pin 16 is. What's pin 16? Pin 16 has got what? What's always on pin 16 on a DLC connector? Oh, it's hot. It's always hot. What's pin 4 and 5? That's ground. Ground. 4 and 5 is ground, 16 is hot. Remember that. Now, this is the one that you got to plug in to get the enhanced data. You see the two? A 12 way connector, a 16 way connector. 12 way means it's got 12 cavities in it. It does not mean there's 12 wires in it. It just means there's 12 cavities that could have wires in them. And you notice this one right here is a twisted pair coming out of the engine controller to that one right there. Only three wires going to that. But that's how you're going to get the data if you want the enhanced data. And the, there was a Y cable that connects to the OBD2 DCL as well as the Mitsubishi data link so you could get both enhanced and OBD data on the scan tool that we were using at the time. Well, the OBD2 generic room that sometimes has codes that don't show up in OBD can be accessed with this now universal 16 pin hookup but the talent wouldn't talk to nothing. It wouldn't start and it wouldn't talk. Now you remember I told you on a lot of these cars out here, if it won't start and it won't talk, and you ain't hearing a fuel pump, you need to see what? What do you need to do? Look at the PCM. See if the PCM's got power on the ground. Right? Like on a, on a, if it's on a Ford out here, I won't basically go to the idle air control or whatever the easiest to get to. It's got the red wire going to it. Injectors all got a red wire going to them. Comes from the same relay. Powers up pin 71 and 97 on the engine controller on the, on the you know, 104 pin. Or whatever ones that... You know, whatever you're working on, find out where the powers and grounds are and see if those fuses and relays are working. I'd go to an easy place to check. Are the injectors powered up? You know, is the idle air control powered up? You know, you got power there. You got power there, you got ground there, you know, which is basically what we're going to do. All right, so power and ground are the appropriate pin. It had the feeds, but there was no ignition and no fuel pulse. Now, if you got power there, check next, see if you got reference voltage. Reference voltage goes to the three wire sensors, right? So if you've got reference voltage, if, if there's a 5 volt reference lead there, and you've got power and ground going to and you've got 5 volts, then you're, you know, you're going to be digging for issues with your crank sensor or something like that. But you can figure it out. Basically what you need to know is what am I seeing, what am I going to do? The signal coming in is going to cause an output, right? All right. Could it be a bad crank sensor? Well, maybe, but that's not going to cause a no communication problem, right? No communication problem, real aggravating. Don't you like to do this plug the scan tool in, get a code, change your part, and be done? You don't need to have that happen, right? Dead PCM. This was a set of circumstances where a scan tool didn't much help. But it was obvious PCM had died, there was no reference voltage anywhere, and either with the idea that the shorted three wire hollow effect sensor might be neutralizing the reference voltage. 
Now what you got to remember is, you got five volts on these on these Chrysler ones. You got nine volts going to your tank and cam and vehicle speed sensor, and you got five volts going to the other sensors. Most vehicles are going to have battery voltage going to Hall effect sensors instead of nine volts. But this one here would shoot it out of there. Now we're going to have twelve volts, but the Chrysler ones and the Mitsubishi you would have nine volts going out of there. There's a sixty pin engine controller. And you notice on this schematic right here, it actually gives you a pin out of the engine controller, which is pretty cool. And this uh, little right here, this connector here, and then that connector down there, you see, it's basically giving you the pin numbers and what the shape of the connector is and what pins, what cavity, and all that kind of thing. Pretty good. But there was nothing coming out of the engine controller, 9 volt or 5 volt. It was all dark. Nothing there. All right, so if the 5 volt reference voltage is shorted to ground on some vehicles, not all of them, but on some of them, uh, there will be a no start and no communication with the scan tool. You know, like you got on this right, you got signal, you got signal return, which is the ground, and you got five volts reference. All three of those go to the engine controller. If this gets shorted to that, all I got to do is take a little single strand of copper wire and go out here on one of our Ford trainer vehicles, and I go from signal return to that five volts, pull that five volts to ground, you won't be able to talk, it won't start, nothing. And on some of these neons, if you remember right under the little ground over here behind the left uh, headlight, if you unhook that ground, then the left headlight will be dim, the wipers will come on all the time, it won't talk and it won't start. It'll go to one ground wire. See what I mean? So be, be aware of how that kind of thing works. It's not all that unusual to have a sensor like a, you know, you may, may have a pressure transducer for your exhaust or for this DPFE, short out internally because of exhaust gases and all, going up in here and cause that kind of a nose start. So what you do is you unplug all the three wire sensors to see if your voltage river voltage coming back. See? You got that? Now, even with a suspect sensor disconnected, crank and cam were still in the loop. We still had no spark and no fuel pulse, so we removed the PCM from the talon, plugged it into a 95 Dodge Neon. Of course, we also had checked it, unplugged those other ones and checked for the 9 volts. But you're not going to get crank or cam. I mean, you're not going to get injector pulse or nothing or spark if the crank and cam is unplugged anyway, but there's no reference voltage anywhere. We removed the PCM from the talon, plugged it into the, not, into the Dodge Neon, because there was only one wire difference, and it was for the torque converter. But uh, so the pinout was almost exactly the same. It wouldn't talk on the neon either. So I had taken the PCM from the bad car, put it on a car that would run, and one the car that would run wouldn't run either after that. So we put a new student PCM in, and the students put it on there, and they cranked the car up, and they drove it up here. Yay, we got victory, right? Nope. They let the magic smoke out of the new PCM. We never brought the magic smoke. And we didn't see any smoke, but it burned that PCM up too. That's a bad scene, isn't it? Now what you gonna do? You know what I mean? Well, what we wound up doing, so we're gonna do an exhaustive check of every pin for power, ground, and shorts to other wires and viable test. That's a viable test, but it takes a long time. Well, what if the problem is intermittent? All right, so you know what happens? I had an expensive piece of equipment at the time, this Sun Dynamic Data Collector, and a little pod, they called it, you could hook it up between the engine controller, that you had to, I had to order uh, and borrow from, uh, rent a connector for this particular car, which, you know, you go into the program, you say, I'm working on a, a 95 Eagle Talon, you know, which is basically a Mitsubishi thing, and it'll say, you need this particular connector, get a hold of Snap-on, you know, and uh, we send them a PO number, and they send us this connector that will go between the engine controller and the wire harness, and now you got the machine, and there's kind of like the service bay diagnostic system, but it fits all different kinds of cars. They quit updating it in 1999. It was a really good machine. Like $9,000, I paid for some of the adapters. Anyway, uh, it's like having a scope that's connected to just about every wire on the car, and all you got to do is go to your, you know, your screen and click it in there and get your pattern from that. Well, it came with an interface card that had to be installed on a Windows PC with an ISA slot, which hadn't been around since 2000. Come on, man. All right, so anyway, we did a sweep test. Now, you want to do on that, what's really cool, once you get the machine hooked up and you get into the program, you say, I want to do a sweep test. And you fold your arms, and it goes back, and it checks the ohms on every wire. Because it knows what they're supposed to be, because the engineers have, you know, tapped all that in. And then it tells you, now turn on the key. And you turn on the key, and it checks all the voltages on every wire. And this is what it came up with. You look at that. So... All right, see, we wound up with what it should be minimum, maximum, and units, see, uh, which is voltage. If 4.2 to 5 well, is what it's supposed to be. When it sees something that's outside of that, it'll light up in red. You got it? Out of spec. 
See, I got almost no voltage anywhere of any kind over there. I'm supposed to have this. And so I said, ah, this is actually doing some work for me. And now I got an idea. Like, how am I going to find out why this doesn't have voltage? Because that was the same issue I had before. All right, so I said, I'm going to take my, what would you do? Crickets? What's up there? What's with the crickets? You know what I mean? What makes sense? Remember, I got a Dodge Neon. It's got an engine controller that will plug into this thing. And it only, it's got one wire difference, it's just a transmission torque converter. But. All right, so I plugged that one in, plugged the 95 Neon controller, didn't start the car, just turned on the key on long enough for this weep test. And this is what I got, TPS, out of spec. Everything else was lit up. Okay, so the results look different. So I had reference voltage all right, but the TP sensor input line was dead. Now, I don't know if it's when you give it the gas it calls it or whatever, well, I disconnected the TP sensor, and I did another test, and it, the voltage went up. See? So I said, okay, now we know more about what we got going on here. The TP problem, TP was the only fault. Well, what, what might destroy the whole circuit PCM? I never have seen a TP sensor on any other car destroy the engine controller. Just have never seen that before. It's a totally truly to lose on that. Pick TP sensor was $85, new PCM on there, everything was peachy keen. Fired up, go away. And you know, the PCM Chrysler more needed out. The encounter was a victory, but finding a problem wouldn't have been so tidy without that. Uh, I don't know what you're supposed to do with that information, but I actually uh, auctioned that thing off because uh, I didn't have a computer that it would work on. And I think you can get an ISA port uh, if you want to, if you really want to dig, dig, dig hard enough and everything. But the adapters were so old on that part, really good on Well, we have another one. Uh, we had a troubleshoot a mid 90s Pontiac that had run just fine until the owner's cousin had changed the intake manifold gasket and afterward it was skipping dead on solar number one. So she asked if we could have a look at it. Okay, the intake manifold gasket was changed and now I skipped it on solar number one. All right, engine skip. How hard can it be, right? Come on, you got a Ranger in it. Engine skip. All right, we checked the obvious steps, spark plug, compression, so on, came up short. Then we heard the injector going cluck, cluck instead of click, click. You know, when you listen to the stethoscope, you're hearing click, 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 click. And when that one on that cylinder wasn't going click, 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 it's going click, 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 click. It sounded totally different from all the rest of them. This is an interesting set of circumstances. It gets better. Replacing the injector did nothing. That's the first thing we did. Put an injector in there, right? Well, wiring from the engine controller to the injector was good. We decided to scope the injector, and we found this. See you know that really narrow injector pulse right there? It was really, really tiny, skinny, and a normal one at the same time on the other injector. All the rest of them looked like this. This is firing each one of them separately. Hey man, did you need some sense? Not a problem. All right. Well, we measured the resistance to the injector, and we got 16 ohms. All right. Now, apply your electrical knowledge. If I've got, no one can probably do this, can't you know? If I've got 16 ohms and I've got 12 volts, how many amps am I going to have? Ohms into volts, huh? 16 into 12 goes how many times? What did you say? You just, you just, you just, 16, you just, 16 into 12 is 0. 0.8. 0. 0.8, there you go. 16 into 12 is 0. 0.8. All right, and sure enough, we measured it, and we got 0. 0.8. Well, that means everything's going to get worse at the Stack your stack, there so many of them. Wow, this was lots. All right, there's mine, there's mine, there's the AC compressor. What's this right here? I don't need that. Yeah, that was the end page of the one with the AC stuff for some reason. Okay. I don't have it. It's All the same right. number. All right, somebody's got to put an AC compressor and accumulator and everything on that uh, expedition out there. Who's up? Who's up for that? Nobody's talking. What is it? Nobody's. Everybody's keeping it. Yeah. What is it? Now? Air conditioner compressor. You got it. That's not for very small boys. You're putting an engine in that trailblazer. Yes. Very small boys put engine in trailblazers. They don't fool the air conditioner. Yes, sir. If you don't mind. All right. All right. So we got eight tenths, right? Uh, we ran temporary wire harness overlay. And change the dagger. What you mean? We ran a temporary wire harness overlay. We ran our own wires to that injector. 
from the engine controller, from the power, we're going to say, is, a, is there a wire problem in the harness that we can't see somewhere? So we just hooked in here and ran some wires to the injector and just wired it up. You know, we hooked it to the right pins and all that kind of stuff, but we just want to see it. Yeah, let's just get the wires out of the loop. All right. Didn't change the damn thing. This thing stayed just like it was. Now, I'm going to tell you, I talked to some GM engineers about this, and they were scratching their heads and saying, I don't know what could cause that. Because on a sequential fuel injected vehicle, it's called one injector. They have a really narrow pulse. Right? Put another engine controller on it. Got one for $20 from the parts store. I mean, not the parts store, the uh, salvage yard. Called Johnny over there. Johnny, you got an engine controller for this? I got one of them for $20. You know, so he brought it over here. And that's how he sounded. You ever talk to him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly what he sounded like. Got one of them for $20. Uh, is that one that's uh, at a junkyard? Yeah, right over here. No, in, in, in Illusia, you know. Oh, yeah. The same problem. Second salvage yard is the only thing that's We got two of them. Didn't change a dang damn thing. Still skipping on that same cylinder. Still going cluck, cluck, cluck. Still got that narrow pattern. Now, I did this with the, with the DDS. I used that for a scope on this one. All right, so we finally connected the trigger wire from the injector next to it. Right there. We just let the injector next to it fire. Because the gas is being stored behind the intake valve for a minute anyway. You know what I'm saying? That thing ran so smooth. And I'm thinking, well, it's like this. If we do burn up the driver and the engine controller, we got two other anyway. We got two more of them. You know what I'm saying? So look what we got to lose. All right, so I talked to my GM engineer buddy. He said, well, these drivers are made to handle about four amps anyway. So if you're putting 1.6 to it, it ain't no problem. And all that, and I said, well, it was an old car. She was happy. No problem. You know, I mean, that's, a, not, I, that's not the way I would like to have fixed that, but how much time are you going to put into a car with that many miles on it that's, <laughs> that's that old, you know what I'm saying? And we've already eliminated everything else. I have no idea what was going on with that sucker. No wonder about that to this day. Anyway, injector waveforms. Whenever you say current ramping, the red's the current ramp. That's when you use the old thing, you clip around the wire. The red's going to be your current ramp. That's when the pedal opens. That's mechanical movement inside the injector when it's open the pedal and the fuel force. That little bump. You see that bump? Everybody see the bump? This is how long the injector is open. This is the pulse width. When you give it the gas, that gets wider. I can actually show you that on an engine control board that we got. We have a scope up to it. If you operate the throttle, it'll actually spread the injector pulse even though it ain't even running a real engine. See what I mean? Because it thinks it is. So basically, blue is the injector voltage, red is the current ramp on this particular one. You might notice we're talking about milliseconds here, and this right here is going to be your, uh, your volt up there. Uh, and so, in the ignition parade pattern, pay attention to this. If you've got a tall pattern, Whatever goes this way can't go that way, and I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about. Tall pattern is going to be an open or a burned out wire, typically. A shorted wire or foul plug. Now, some people will say that the uh, if you've got lean fuel, it'll do that. First time I ever, really, let me, me get through it here and I'll make you a work order, okay? We're, we're working on your, on your job here. But uh, what I saw when I was at the Center in my office, if you don't do now, what I saw right here on the, uh, that little spark land, when you got to leave, well, let me tell you this, shorted plug wires have a real short power. This is the firing line. Let's talk about what this all means. The firing line is when it first jumps the spark plug gap. And this right here is the whole time that spark is burning after it's jumped the spark plug gap. But as soon as it runs out of any fuel to conduct that electricity across the molecules, it starts to get more and more resistance and it kicks up and then that spark burns out and you got leftover energy right here, see? So this is basically the firing voltage. This is how much it takes to burn across there while it's after it's jumps. So when it jumps, it goes pop! It takes a hard jump and then it's got to go bzzz. It's got to burn for a little bit. And then when it runs out of fuel in that uh, thing, you can do that. Old uh, Mac Vandenbrink, you know, had a little thing that slide on his work. You can actually look at this firing line and tell that you got a camshaft over and it off. And then some, but anyway, your dwell on the old ignition system was how long the points were closed before they opened and fired the coil. And dwell basically is going to be running from here to here, actually. But they got current limiting circuitry in some of the electronic modules that is saturating the coil. You know, that's your primary zone coil. Points closed, current limiting, firing voltage, spark line is what that's called. This is the firing line, this is the spark line. Know the difference. Leftover energy. If you've got a weak ignition coil, or something is robbing some voltage from this circuit, you will not have leftover energy here. Hydrocarbons consumed, you have an upkick, right? 
This right here is the primary ignition pattern. Now the secondary is your spark plug wire where the spark's jumping. It's measured in thousands of volts. This, the primary looks almost just like it. It's a little different, but you can tell the same thing. You notice it's got an up kick, leftover energy, spark line, firing voltage, but you're looking at about 400 volts instead of, you know, 10 or 12,000 volts. Points closed, well is here, points open here. All right. Now you can also get primary current voltage on your coil. See, I've got, I'm actually measuring that, looking it up there. You know that little tool I got that I got from General Technologies at 505? It actually will give you a pattern like this, and it will give you the other pattern too, just landed on top of that, of that coil and plug coil or whatever, or on the wire. All right, keep pay attention to this. Question one. You ready for question one on your test? What is this waveform here? What is this waveform here? Identify the above waveform. If you were listening earlier in the presentation, you'd know what it was. Slide that point on the waveform? Or yeah, like this, no, this whole thing. The whole, the whole waveform. What, is that, what am I measuring here? we got to have time to go back and talk about this. Do you feel like you're all beat up and everything? What does that little bump mean? Yeah, I'm doing a PowerPoint, what you need? Alright. Alright, so what's that little bump mean? If you were listening, you'd know, right? Did I talk about that little bump? I did, didn't I? Do you remember what it was? Alright. Define these points in a secondary ignition pattern. What if this was your final exam? Be bad. Do y'all have both engines on fire going down into the trees right now? What's up with that? Okay, we got it uh, from point A to E. Yeah, yeah. I want to know what uh, what that yeah. is, what that is, what that is, what this is, what that is, and what that is. Three so A is okay. Nick, we don't go back home. Told Mama said he gave us the test and he didn't slap a taste out of our mouth. Man, I'm talking about. Look at Noah. Noah's over right in the entrance. He knew he was listening. Noah was homeschooled, man. and Noah don't miss a trick. I'm telling you. You watch Noah? Noah just powers through whatever you give him. You notice that? Noah just keeps on going. Noah is the electude master. Out of town. Okay. The fire order on a 4.3 liter Chevy V6 is... 165432. That's not hard to remember, you know why? You start at one and count down from six. What's the companion cylinder for number three? In other words, if you were going to hook up coil, one other, what cylinder is on exhaust when three is on compression? This is engine performance, you either know it or you don't. There's a lot of compression loss on cylinder number one. Fire order is one, four, two, five, three, six. In order, what's the first three procedures would you perform to find out where this compression is leaking? I'll get. I'll let you get away with two. How about that? Let's just put the first two. Now, once you find out what cylinder it is, you got to go check that cylinder. Right? Question six, what's this a picture of? What's that sound? I don't hear, I don't hear a sound. I, don't know. I hear it. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to put up some washers under the corner of my tripod again. It's making a crooked picture. All right. List the three harmful gases controlled by the emission system on a gas-powered vehicle. 
Y'all been doing your electives. <laughs> you been doing your electives. Uh, no, I just did this. I didn't mean to make him cry. Uh, surprisingly enough, I already know this just by watching movies. What? Yeah. <laughs> so Remember like, the movies where the exhaust is coming out and it suffocates the people? And yeah. It, it, they list like what happened and yeah. crime scene murders. and. I'm sorry, I used to watch a lot of movies when I was young. <laughs> That's okay. It's not a problem. How many amps can an injector driver handle on a 95 GM ECM? How many amps can it handle, the injector driver? Do you need a laugh line? Yeah. Who is that? You feel like you're all beat up and everything? This guy. All right, question nine. Which trace is secondary and which is primary? Did you want to be challenged? No. What's a typical fire in order for a straight four? Four cylinder. Order is going to fly. All right. Yeah, you have to try it. Huh? Huh? Uh, All no. right. Tell me what that waveform is. That's like a spark injection. Injector current ramp. Same thing. Injector current ramp. So Injector current ramp. Injector. This right here means the pintle has moved. You got mechanical movement inside the injector. And that's what that little bump means. That means that's the pintle spike. has opened. And it may be higher up on the, the slope sometimes. Define these points. What happens here? That's the. Uh, damn I'm going to call that when the points close, when it begins to saturate. I said, I said, damn. Now this right here is the spark voltage. Yes. This right here is the firing line. B would be the spark duration in milliseconds. This is when the hydrocarbons, this is the upkick when the hydrocarbons have all been used up, and this is leftover energy. You got it? Are you going to remember that when I put a pattern up after? What was C? That's when. Yeah, C is basically the, the the amount of voltage it takes to keep the spark there after it has jumped. Right? That's the spark voltage. And this is the spark line. This is the firing line. This is how tall it is. The tall. Whatever goes up this way can't go that way. So if this goes higher, that's going to get shorter. Mm -hmm. If it takes more to jump it, it doesn't have much left to burn. Indeed. If you see one of these without uh, oscillations, that means you got a weak coil or you got weak voltage feeding that coil. And D is going to die in E. All right. Like All this 4.3 liter Chevy, if it's one of these six others, this one right here, you count one. To, you know, that one there. See? And if you draw a circle, in other words, the, like the one that you know, what's the one for this? You're going to count two and then that one. See? If it was one, it'd be one and four. Six and it's going to be three and six. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, three and five. Three and five. No, excuse me. Three, two, one, six. There you go. It's going to be the, the one that's right. Like one. If you draw a circle and you act like that. Uh, Imaginary distributor count. And you follow that around, the one that's directly across from it in the circle is going to be the one that's the companion. Right? Always remember that. Just draw a circle and make you an imaginary distributor cap. And if you draw directly across from the one you're wondering about, that's going to be your companion. That's all you need to know. All right, you got another firing order though. There's a lot of compression loss. What I'm going to do first? What you going to do first on the cylinder in question? I want to do a compression test and see what it is. We're not compression now. And then I'm going to do a solar leakage test. You all done that, right? You got a sheet you give out for that? Solar leakage test. That's it. I got to give out another baby of worksheet for you guys. All right. That's usually all you have to do. Then right there, they pull the cover off of the inverter on a Toyota Prius. That's a hybrid vehicle. And that's the inverter. The inverter takes the DC voltage from the battery and turns it into AC voltage to run the motor that drives the car. Or you know, start the engine. That's, so that's the inverter? That's the inverter. That is the inverter on a Prius hybrid. Now they don't all look the same, but there's enough energy stored in those capacitors that you have to disable that system to just take you out. 
You know what I mean? Them orange wires, you see big orange wires under there? So you see big orange wires under there, that's going to fire you up. You yeah, got to be really, really careful. There's actually a, a plug you take out of the back.